Good morning. Uh, I hope you can all hear me and see me okay. Um, I'm going to be asking you today to be using the chat box. So if you haven't used it before, please take a moment to go in there while we're getting started. Um, you might see that Pam and I have already been uh, talking to each other and it's really useful for me to know what kind of business you run and um, whether it's uh, conversations with staff, internal conversations or sort of external with customers or perhaps with suppliers that you most want to focus on today. Because it's really important to me that you get the most out of this. So if you, you know, uh, give me some ideas of what direction is most important to you, then I can make sure that we try and cover that today. Um, so thank you, Pam, for that. And uh, everyone else, I, you know, I kind of just see a name um, and uh, I don't get a lot of information in advance about you guys. So it would be really, really useful to to know that. Um, I was waiting for one of the staff members from uh, Business Station to come online. I'm sure they'll hop on shortly. Um, but we will, as it's 11.02, make a start. Um, but there's a few of you in there today, so please don't be shy. Don't be quiet. <laughs> Do say, hi, Sarah. Thank you. You run a fencing and fabrication business. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, that's great. Yeah, so keep adding those in. And I'm going to screen share, but I'll keep checking back to the chat box as we go through. So um, I really highly suggest you have a pen and paper ready, or, um, you know, you might want to take a quick picture or screenshot things as I go through. If you've got any questions, please don't be shy. Um, I'll try and get to all of them as we go through the session. So the plan is to cover those um, objectives, those outcomes that I put in the event plan, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end for specific Q&A. So if you've got a situation and you're not sure what to do, then you can, again, pop those in the, in the Q&A or in the chat box and I'll try and get to those um, before the end of the session. So uh, let's get started with a screen share. <laughs> Good morning, everyone just joining. Great to see you here. Okay, so uh, this morning's session is about effective communication, dealing with tricky situations in person and online. Um, because uh, I don't know about you guys, but you know, the last few months, it's been a lot of tricky situations and a lot of heightened emotions as well. People, um, you know, dealing with things in all different ways and a lot of stress going around generally. So, um, you know, there have been some more of those tricky conversations with friends, with family, but also as a small business owner. So, <clears throat> why is that not flicking through for me? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, just before we begin, um, my name is Beth Ann. Um, I grew up in Wales, a very Welsh name, <laughs> uh, the land of dragons, but I now live here in uh, Wajuk Noongar land where we meet today, or I'm in Perth. I know some of you might not be. Um, I'd really like to acknowledge your gift of time and being here today and hopefully, you know, what I can give to you in terms of help and support. Uh, we're so blessed to have freedom to explore this land and I'd like to pay my respects to our elders um, past, present and emerging. So what's your business? Thank you to those of you who've already popped that in the chat box and um, I'd like you to pop something that's made you smile because we'll talk today about rapport and the importance of building that for good communication. So something like this, you know, with your team, with your customers, when you're having conversation, focusing on something positive to start is a great way to build rapport. So I'd really love to see something that's made you smile in the last 24 hours, maybe. Um, so I'm just gonna flick open to my chat and see what's in there. So pop it in. Uh, oh, okay, thank you, Carol. <laughs> Something I'm trying to do, yeah. I think it's very important. Um, and uh, Joe is here from Brunswick Jun Junction Community Resource Center. Cool, thank you. Um, yes, I think that's Pam, comments on life from a four-year-old. Absolutely, often my thing that makes me smile is, something my five-year-old or my three-year-old has said uh, uh, this morning, my daughter, my three-year-old, she was wearing her pajama pants the wrong way around with a pouch on the front rather than on the bum, so being a kangaroo, that's made me smile today. <laughs> um, a long walk with looking at the birds, they always make me smile. Thank you, Sarah, that's beautiful. Um, Lauren from the Catherine Show in the Northern Territories, 
Cool. My puppy always makes me smile. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I put the dog here. Most people like a smiley dog. Wonderful. Oh, this is so nice. This is so nice to get um, get to know a little bit about you guys because you feel like you're just talking to yourself sometimes on these webinars. Essential oils business. Awesome. Thank you, Carol. I'm getting out in the garden, see the bees at work. Wonderful. Oh, I'm loving all these comments. Fantastic. Um, I'll just flick on with this and uh, you'll see my business is, uh, I'm a critical thinking specialist. Oh, and I just maximized your comments. <laughs> I'm a critical thinking specialist. I do training and lecturing in that. Um, uh, I offer training to help people think clearly, decide confidently and act in line in their values. Um, my background is also as a communications lecturer for UWA. So um, that's why you know, I'm doing this session today. I thought I could bring something to that. And things like this make me smile. This is a picture from February in a training session. A good friend of mine, Emma, came along there and we're sharing a joke. I love being with people, um, but you know, we're learning to use Zoom effectively and do webinars and seminars in this format too. Um, I'm just going to check what other comments we have in the chat box. Um, Tina, a successful businessman who'd given up working and staying off to travel around the country in his donut van. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, da -da -da. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Of course, you can't see them, can you? Yeah, please change your chat box to um, all panelists and then you can see each other's comments because there's a few in here. Sorry, that's a very good point that not everyone can see. Um, Joe has said to me, a walking group were here this morning and they shared lots of their morning tea. And then the men shared dropped the rest of their morning tea. Oh, wow. Fabulous, Joe. You're very well fed today. That's fantastic. Yes, thank you, Tina. That's a great point. So, um, sorry, whoever said it, Sarah, <laughs> to do it to all attendees. And then we can help each other out a bit more because I'm sure as we go through, there's some things that I can offer a few suggestions, but you know, multiple heads are better than one so you can also feedback on each other's comments okay let's get into it shall we um so the workshop will give you hopefully by the end you'll feel you've got a model for effective communication an understanding of why communication fails sometimes some tips to prepare for the difficult conversations the importance of establishing rapport like i just mentioned if you are here from the top and how to do it um help for giving and receiving constructive feedback confidence to approach tricky conversations and some guidelines for tricky online interactions. Um, so in the chat box, I'd like you to write down um, something about what difficult conversations you're having and how you feel about them. So do write that in. I'll give you a minute. And um, what I'll do is sort of flick back to them as we go through, but I'll get started with the, some of those things that we want to cover off today. I want to make sure we get lots of time for you guys to go through your scenarios as well. So um, there's not currently anything in there, but do write that in. You don't, you know, um, feel free to do it in an anonymous fashion. You can just say, you know, um, feedback to a staff member or maybe an online complaint, whatever it is for you. And I've tried to keep some variation in the examples that I've included. All right, I'll give you some time to do that. And I'm gonna go into the model of communication because I think these things, this is very kind of academic approach, but it's really useful to help us understand. So um, this is what's called a linear model of communication. You see there's an information source in the blue um, and there's the destination in the orange. And we sometimes think, okay, I have a message. I wanna send that message to another person. It's a straight line and they will get the message. Um, which is almost like a, a robot or a computer would send a message from A to B and make a connection. And, and we assume that the message that is sent is the same as the message received and that there's no noise, no kind of disruption in the middle. However, <laughs> as we know, if I say, um, I don't know, I'd like the pink one or something, we don't know that the person who I'm talking to knows which shade of pink I want, or perhaps they uh, are colorblind, so they pick something different. So the, the message that's received isn't always the message that we send. Um, so something like this is more useful for us. This is called a meaning oriented model of communication. Um, and it shows you here all the kind of intricacies involved when we're trying to send a message because as you can see in the middle there's a little two-way arrow the meaningful messages are there so 
they're going both ways all the time. It's not like I send a message and you throw it back like a tennis ball. There are these tennis balls constantly happening. So things like in the green, the social context that we're in, in the blue, the common language and whether that's literally the language but also the words that we might be using um, it can be you know um, a particular jargon for your industry perhaps um, mutual awareness so how well do you um, understand and appreciate the other person are they paying attention to you so if it's a face-to-face -face but someone's on the phone then obviously they're not giving full awareness to the conversation in the pink across we have shared experience so um, if it's someone who's very similar to yourself you will have more similar experiences in life which will influence your perception of the situation but also um, if you've had shared experience together so perhaps if it's um, a staff member then you will have lots of shared experience or a customer that you've known for a long time and then in the circles you see the um, intention so what you the reason that you mean to have the, that you mean to send the message so what you want to convey um, and then how you decide to interpret that so perhaps i want to um feedback to a staff member that um i don't know they have body odor for example that's a very difficult conversation to have so i might consider do i say that out loud face to face do i um send a message by i don't know putting some deodorant in the staff toilets do i um uh, phew, that's a tricky one how would you you know you can convey that message in lots of different ways so think about the interpretation from yourself and how they might respond how they interpret the message back because if i just put deodorant in the staff toilets they might not realize it's for them whereas if i couple that with a face-to-face -face comment a text message probably wouldn't be appropriate in that case um, then that's something that they will interpret more more clearly and we're going to talk a bit about that today about the clarity of what we say um, so that's something that can help us understand why communication fails sometimes and i just think it's a useful thing to refer to and what's important here you'll notice in a face-to-face -face situation pretty much all of those things apply whereas when we get to the online section we lose the social context we lose shared experience in many cases we lose many of the channels of communication so things like the way we dress our smile uh, a winky face that we might put would replace the tone of voice that we say things in so that's why the online is a little bit different okay so getting into it um I'm just going to check in with the chat box. Please, as I said, feel free to pop things in there. Timeframes for appointments. Okay, yeah, good one. And members of the team who are not contributing. Yeah, I'll, I'll check in with that. Why do they, do they still want to be a member of a team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, great. Okay, I'm going to pop back here and try and bear those in mind. That appointment one, though, please remind me if I don't, if I don't remember to come back to that, but I try to. <laughs> so good communication in general. Present yourself in the best light and smile smiling is such an important lubricant as it were to good conversation um, be clear in what you're saying the words that you're choosing don't beat around the bush <laughs> empathize so try and put yourself in the other person's shoes how does it feel from their perspective and remember we are always looking at things through our personal view of the world our lens so we might assume that the other person will be upset by this feedback but they might not be they might not care they might uh they might feel quite differently than how we assume that they're gonna um respond be open-minded and be curious about um you know how they're feeling what's going on things like that ask them questions to help you understand what's going on from their point of view pause before responding especially in the online stuff we'll come back to that seek to understand best you can and if, if they're saying things that you you're not getting then say can you help me understand it's a very important question to ask you know if you're saying I, i'm not sure I, I get what you mean please can you help me understand rather than dismissing it and you know giving them the impression that they're, they're wrong in some way you don't have to agree but it's really good to try and understand best you can um, and giving the benefit of the doubt this is something called Hamlin's razor which is kind of cool don't attribute to malice something that could be attributed to ignorance so perhaps with the appointments you know if you 
I assume that the person like they're, they're I don't know forgetful or um, rude or whatever most of us most of the time are in very busy lives trying to do lots of things at once so perhaps they just don't appreciate that from your point of view if they are 20 minutes late then that does have a huge impact but if you communicate that to them to help them in a gentle way it can help them to understand and be on time for example um so i've seen you know very nicely phrased things in um uh confirmations of appointment saying if you are going to be late please inform us as soon as possible because um, time is very precious to us in our business and it will impact on our ability to serve to the best of our ability. Little phrasings like that can really help um, the customer relationship. Okay, so those are just some general points. Now let's get on to, um, when we think about criticism, we often think of it as a really negative thing. So particularly if you're talking to staff, reframing it as a positive, and the same when we get criticism or complaints from customers, reframing it as a positive. Our, our initial response to criticism is usually defense, fight or flight kicks in, we get very stressed. Whereas if we can say, okay, this is actually a way that I can improve, I can innovate, perhaps there's some ideas here that I can take to improve my business. Um, it's a way that we can grow as individuals or as business owners. Um, to evolve and improve what we offer. Sorry, I've written that twice. <laughs> so we can improve, a bit of feedback to myself to improve that slide. <laughs> but we, you know, we see it as a really negative thing, but it can be very positive and it can help us grow. And before we approach a situation, you know, we get very anxious before we have to deal with these difficult situations, but it's useful to run through um, the six thinking hats idea of like, what's the worst possible scenario for this? What's the worst way it could play out? And we often focus on that too much. What's the best case scenario? Best case, that thing that we're trying to fix or that thing that we would like to change may well change and it may well improve. Um, Perhaps the person with the comments about does this staff member actually want to be here? Perhaps they don't and perhaps that is the best case scenario is that they, they admit that and you say right Maybe it's time we we find a good way for you to move on um, If they're not happy in their in their role or maybe we find ways to improve the role So an alternative outcome might be to try and find the solution together because when we are involved in the solution, we take ownership of the situation much, much more. Um, in 10 years time, will you wish that you'd had these conversations or will you wish that you hadn't? So it's a useful reframe. Um, if it's a, a conversation with a business partner that you, you know you need to have, then you probably wish you'd faced it in 10 years time. Or if it's, um, I don't know, uh, a customer that really annoyed you because of a uh, difference in values, then maybe that one is one that you go mm, it wasn't worth the stress for me to pursue that situation um values is this part of who i am and who i want to be is this the kind of business owner i want to be am i the kind of person who will have these difficult conversations and how is the person i want to be going to approach them so particularly if you're lacking confidence then you think right who do i want to be in this scenario um consider the different perspectives how does it look from their point of view and also effort versus reward. Sometimes, um, perhaps if it's a customer who's a bit annoyed, uh, they bought one product from you once and they're not from the area, you know, we never quite know what the ongoing impacts of a conversation are, but, you know, we can spend a lot of time dealing with these difficult customers. But if there's uh, the reward for us in terms of um, financial or emotional reward of feeling that we've made it right, um, is it worth the effort that's required for us to to do that with that person? Um, you know, if it was someone perhaps we know to be very influential with lots of Instagram followers and you might put more effort into fixing that relationship than someone who um, you, you know, you're, they're not your ideal client, they're not your ideal customer. And if they're a bit disgruntled, then sometimes you think, never mind, I'll, I'll give you some scripts that you can use for how you might deal with that. But how can you make it um, you know, worth your while to invest the time in fixing that? Because as we all know, customer service is so important these days and you never quite know where those things are gonna lead. Um, so maintaining that um, good relationships as much as possible is important, but we don't need to 
absolutely kill ourselves bending over backwards going out of our way to fix it as well so finding that balance is right um communicate i'm just checking in with the chats here so carol has sent just to me the members of the team who are not contributing oh yeah i saw that one communication misunderstood between myself and the coordinate via email cross purposes uh yes um yes uh, the six thinking hats is an edward de bono concept originally so i've just adapted the questions a little bit there but it's just about giving you some different perspectives for that thanks carol for that question i'm going to nip back into oh, oh sorry <laughs> back and forth here um back into the presentation I can't see your chats when I'm screen sharing, so that's why we're ducking back and forth a little bit. So um, here we go. So the six thinking hats, we've done that. Thank you for your patience. Uh, right, so what are the barriers? Um, sometimes it's fear. We're scared to have that conversation. Sometimes we feel we lack authority. Uh, sometimes we just lack confidence and the skills. So hopefully you'll come away from today feeling a bit more confident. Um, Sometimes we aren't sure what we're trying to do. You know, are we transferring information? Are we sort of trying to just tell the other person what the thing is, or are we having a conversation? And a little trick for you to take away for any any of these difficult difficult um, situations is try and make sure there is an element of that conversation. Because as I said, when the other person's bought in and feels listened to and heard, then they're going to be much more amenable to continuing the conversation. Um, and also other barriers, things are particularly difficult at the moment because when things are uncertain, it causes more stress and, you know, everybody's emotions are heightened. So there's a, you know, a lot more of these kind of negative feelings floating around right now, as I mentioned at the top. So some key points with the difficult conversation, it's never going to be easy. I am good friends with a mediator um, and she says, you know, every time she goes into these situations um you know difficult situations legal battles family situations she always gets that twisty knot feeling in her stomach i'm sure you can all kind of identify with and you're about to go in and go oh I, I don't really want to do this so you need to acknowledge that you know nobody finds it easy nobody loves to have these conversations um communicating assertively is really important being direct being clear now being sort of from the UK, we tend to do the Hugh Grant, oh, I'm terribly sorry, would you mind awfully, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't help. So it's useful, you know, when I have a difficult conversation to pause and consider my words, what is the most direct way I can do this, but also being clear and assertive. So the main point of feedback doesn't get lost in the nervous ramblings that we might add in. A useful way to frame things is to give an observation rather than blame. I'll give you an example in a moment, but if you can say, I've noticed that this has been happening. So perhaps with the email example there um, that was popped in, rather than saying, your emails are rude, your emails are unclear, or your emails are not helpful, perhaps you could say something like, I've noticed that we've had a few misunderstandings over email. Can we work on a way together to improve this? Because it's causing some tension. Um, so it's, it's not blaming the other person and it's not a finger pointing exercise. It's like, I've noticed this has been happening. Um, and you know, you can then back it up with evidence if you need to, if they say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You say, well, perhaps last Tuesday when we had this discussion, this happened and I thought it was this. So then you can back it up if they don't, you know, if they're not believing what you're telling them. Um, frame requests assertively. So if you're the, the boss here and you're giving instructions to someone else, you can say, I need you to, or I want you to, rather than a question. So if you say it like a question, you know, would you mind doing this? Then it gives them the, the, the ability to say no <laughs> I, I would mind doing that actually I don't want to um, whereas if you say it in an assertive manner then that's positioning yourself as the leader in that situation to get what you need from it and like I said finding solutions together if you think about you know if, if uh, I don't know you went to see a fitness coach and they said right you're going to exercise six days a week for an hour this is your plan you're going to do it 
you just pick me personally i'll just laugh and say ah that's not gonna happen whereas if they said okay let's work on a plan together what's going to fit around your lifestyle perhaps i don't know 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the evening that's still very ambitious <laughs> but figuring out what what works for them because we can assume various things about what we think would work but to build it together means they're going to buy in and own the solution together so for example here um, in a private situation because you know you don't want to embarrass people when you're giving them feedback hopefully in a position when you're not rushed because you know when we're rushed we're already thinking about the next thing try and find a window to give the piece of feedback you might pull them aside and say hey can i just have a quick word um something like this i've noticed that observation you've been leaving work early um i need you to be here until 5 30 pm every day so that's being assertive this is what is required in the job essentially um, is there a reason that you can't stay until then? So you're opening up the conversation to allow them to collaborate on a solution, but you've made it very clear what you require them to do. Now, it may be, you know, if you're in an office situation, then your solution could uh, be an easy workaround. They might say, actually, uh, I'm finding it hard to get to daycare on time to collect my children. Could I work until five? And unless they have to be in the office and then perhaps carry on with the other half hour or hours worth of work or whatever it is at another point. So as long as the, as the objectives are being met. And that's why it's important to be clear on why you need them to do something. If you can explain that to them, then that's also very helpful to help them appreciate from your point of view why it's become an issue or why they need to fix it. OK, so that's a one example. You could probably tweak the wording a little bit to something that you need to do, particularly if it's for staff. <coughs> oh, I don't know if you can see that. You might need to move my my little face box. <laughs> um, it, if you're going into a difficult conversation, then it's useful to think in advance if there's anything that you need to cover off on this list. So um, particularly, particularly if it's a bigger conversation, what information do you need? And whether that's evidence or alternatives, or perhaps you want to figure out salary or something that you might be able to do. Do you need to do any research? Who needs to be involved? So like I said, if it's just a one on one, pull them aside. But if it's something that involves someone else, consider what the role is and what's the purpose for bringing in other people. And also really the purpose of the conversation. What, you, what is your objective? What do you want to get out of it before the end of the conversation? Where do you want it to go? If you've got a clear idea, then you can take out anything that is not going to help you achieve that purpose. So anything around, you know, um, being angry, insults, blaming is normally not constructive. It's probably not going to move you towards your purpose. Whereas that constructive attitude, that curiosity of how can you um, yeah, work together and how can you help each other understand the different perspectives is really going to help you achieve what you want. Um, context, what is the conversation really about? Um, <laughs> this applies to pretty much any relationship, but sometimes, you know, a conversation about the time that you arrive and leave at work is really about somebody wanting to feel in control and feeling uh, that they have authority in that situation and wanting the other person to fall in line. Um, so be aware of that, you know, and, and the expectations Often we get into patterns um, at work or in life where we, we do certain things and, and our expectation really drives how we feel about the outcome. Um, you know, perhaps you get a, a customer who's upset that the essential oils business and um, they were expecting their parcel to arrive within 10 days um, and it took two weeks for whatever reason post is slow at the moment so the expectation that person has if that expectation isn't met that's when we get complaints that's when things go wrong so um you know making sure that things are clear on that from the outset is really really useful and in all of these things communication maintaining those good lines of communication is really really important for when things do go wrong then you've got a good relationship to start from um, what do you need from them? What do you need them to do? That's again, coming back to the objectives. Why does it matter? Um, and these conversations, they are hard because they do matter to us. They're, that's why they're difficult. They're things that are important to us that we, we want to try and get right. Um, 
what do I want from this? What do I need? What do they need? Thinking through those questions and the process. What's the right time to have this conversation? What's the right phrasing? So going back to some of the things in the example I just gave you. Um, I'm just going to check in the chat box. I can see there's one thing outstanding there. I'm not sure that I've brought um, got anyone online from... Oh. Oh no, sorry, I'll come back to that. <laughs> Apologies if I've uh, skipped over, but I'll come back to them in a second. Um, in terms of rapport, rapport is really useful to have, like I said, if you've got that good relationship. Um, and in any situation, it's good to start off with good rapport. So um, acknowledging feelings of the other person is, you know, it, it shows that you're paying attention to them because at the end of the day, often, you know, we just want someone to, to notice, to acknowledge, to, to see us and see how we're feeling, how, what's going on with us. Um, you can reassure them. So, you know, if you're talking about their um, uh, behavior at work, you might say, you know, don't worry, this is not something that is um, gonna, you're not gonna lose your job, um, but this is something that we do need to work on together. Collaboration, as I just mentioned, being specific, the tone of voice that you use, your body language, um, so, you know, I'm sure we all know some things, but things like mirroring, so being, um, not copying, but yeah, doing their movements back to them is a very powerful way to connect and establish rapport. Um, so if they're leaning forward, you could lean forward. If they are, um, I don't know, um, leaning on their hand, then you can do the same. And it's amazing. You can play around with this a bit. It's quite fun to see whether anybody notices that you are copying them you're doing it the same and when we've got a good rapport when there is a connection we do it naturally but there might be a situation where you know you're feeling uncomfortable and it might not be happening so you can consciously then go okay i'm gonna sit in a way which mirrors the other person to help them feel more comfortable um it's useful to consider side on rather than face on um you've probably seen this again in lots of different contexts if you are dead on facing someone it's quite confrontational but staring them straight in the eye whereas if you are either side by side going for a walk or perhaps doing some activity at right angles then it, it softens it softens that situation a bit you're not in that direct confrontation and making sure there's no barriers to the communication so there's nothing like a phone or um literally it's noisy you're having to shout um that they're distracted by something out the window whatever it may be <laughs> i'm saying that because i just saw a couple of lizards <laughs> coming up the wall out there so there's all sorts of barriers things that can get in the way of good communication so making sure in that moment that you are 100 percent focused <clears throat> when you're receiving feedback thinking about your how you respond to it oh, 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 is also very important so this might be a complaint but you can also you know ask your staff to feedback to you about how things are going so be aware of your emotional response there's always that trigger as soon as someone says can i have a word can i talk to you about something in private we get that <laughs> fight flight or freeze kicks in um so we want to try and keep that in check take a breath go okay maybe there's some feedback coming but that's good that reframe because it's going to help me improve Avoid infilling and mind reading. We have so many cognitive biases that try and jump in and fill the gaps and we make assumptions about stuff. So ask for clarification if you need that. So uh, comment at the top there about um, communication, maybe poor communication between the manager and a staff member. Um, but when we talk about communication, that can mean anything from inappropriate touching to uh, texting at late at night to unclear emails. So be clear about what you're trying to give feedback on or what feedback you're getting and, and ask for that. Say, well, what exactly do you mean? Can you please give me an example? Um, if it's something you're giving to someone else or you're receiving, is this useful feedback about behavior I can change? Or are they just having a go at me? So perhaps in a complaint, you know, if somebody's in a bad mood, they're having a bad day and they've complained to you about something, you can sort of nod and smile and agree and say, oh, I'm really sorry that that's the experience you've had. But you can also in the back of your mind, hold this up as like, is this something, is this just something going on with them? Or is this something that I can improve on here and something I can learn from the situation? 
So again, that empathy, consider it from their situation. Um, if you don't believe them, and it's something that happens regularly, ask them to tell you when it happens next. Don't call them a liar. There's nothing worse than being told you're a liar. Um, but, you know, is it, perhaps this is, you know, a, a regular occurrence with a staff member, um, and they're saying, oh, you're, um, you, you're rude to me in front of customers, for example, and they're saying that to you as the boss, then you say, okay, can you maybe let me know when it happens next time? Um, and this is true of everything. I know there's a couple of parents on this call, but the same with children, you know, you can say, oh, you always do that thing <laughs> with our spouses. You always do that thing. And then I say, I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. So telling them in the moment is always more useful if you kind of catch them doing the thing that you, you're talking about. But also, you know, the positives, the good side, try and catch them doing well. Or if, if you notice that, um, that thing has improved so celebrate the positives as well and perhaps when you're getting uh, I don't know a customer who's particularly angry you can sort of check in and say well what about this aspect or what about this can we find some positives and a place to work from together um, if you've got feedback from a client or customer or a staff member um, again it, some questions to ask yourself is there anything positive that's come out of this uh, is there any appreciations that were shared? What actions were suggested or were there actions suggested? That's, you know, there's no point complaining if there's nothing you want to, you know, getting a complaint if there's nothing you want to work on from there. What does the feedback teach me about how I or my business is perceived? So what can you learn from this? And is that how you want to be perceived? You know, if they, um, are going away with the impression that you don't care about your customers then that's probably not how you want your business to be perceived you want um for example with appointments perhaps um you know you want to be perceived as punctual reliable someone that people can um, turn to and they know what they're going to get then that's a useful thing for us to to consider when we, we're told oh you know you were you, you were late or the staff member was late you need to get on top of that and make sure that the perception of your business matches how you want it to be. So that's the very next question. What opportunities are there in this criticism? Um, so if it's, for example, a customer complaint, is there some opportunity there to, you know, work with the person to build on this, to, to make it better. And you can sometimes turn it around and turn it into good PR. And I'll show you some examples in a sec. Um, in what way did the feedback resonate with my own notions of what I need to work on or did it surprise me in some way? So, you know, it's okay to admit and say, look, we're, we're not the best at responding quickly to our emails. Um, we thank you for your patience and that's something that we want to work on. Or you might say, oh gosh, you know, I thought two day response time to an email was perfectly fine. So perhaps I need to change my perception of what is good, good feedback or good response rate to things. Um, if we're online, then the situation is a little bit different. Like I said, we lose so many channels of communication. So always pause in an online situation. Never respond in anger online. And I'm sure you all can uh, remember a situation where you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that. And, and it's easy to get... Uh, dragged along and and we feel like we need to respond instantly it's not the case it's fine to just give yourself you know a couple of hours to pause reflect maybe get someone to check what you're going to put um and also the other alternative would be to say you know thank you for your comments we're taking some time to consider them and we'll get back to you it's perfectly fine to do that and it shows them that you're listening that you've seen the comment and that you're paying attention take it offline or take it at least private where possible rather than it being in a public forum because remember whatever you put on your um facebook your instagram uh linkedin whatever social media you use is a public forum and other people can see what you've said in response to others comments so it's kind of a an interesting one to be you know if you can take it offline get make a phone call whatever whatever is gonna um let you do it in a, a less pressured environment because remember whatever you write online can be screenshot and shared 
whether that's, I mean, email, people don't screenshot and share email so much, but it's been done, obviously. And then things like uh, Facebook, private messages, Instagram private messages, things like that. If those are things that you use in your business, it's very easy for it to be shared around. I'll show you in a sec one of those. So if you've got a uh, Google review, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, apologize if you need to. Yeah, you don't always have to apologize. It depends really on the situation. But if there's something there that you need to apologize for, just do it. Be humble and do it. Show them that you're listening. Like I said, try not to ignore the comments. Try and view it from their perspective. Perhaps, I don't know, it was uh, something very special and important to them that didn't quite go right. Then we need to empathize with them and try and think, right, okay, maybe we didn't quite meet the expectations or perhaps their expectations were too high. We didn't clarify them. So there's ways that you can consider, all right, what can we do better next time? Ask them to contact you privately. So if you can involve them in the situation, how can we make it better? So then it puts them on your side. Is it a problem you can fix? Can those complaints be turned into a good PR situation? Yeah, perhaps it was something that started off as a bad situation, but is there some way we can flip it by building that rapport, by showing that we're listening, by involving them in the solution? Um, admit mistakes if you made some. Defensiveness and lying won't help. So don't say, oh, we're really sorry. And that person is now undergoing intensive training on how to deal with these situations. If they're not undergoing intensive training, don't say it. Yeah, try and, um, you know, find a way to um, appease the situation without pretending something's happening that's not. And being defensive in any difficult conversation isn't helpful so as much as you can try and avoid those and don't attack the other person don't criticize them don't call them a liar you just have to suck it up to some extent and say okay i'm listening please tell me rather than actually you were very rude actually you did this wrong actually you didn't communicate you didn't do that especially if it's in public because you know privately you might think i don't like this person they're a bit of a d-i-c-k but um, publicly, you can't say that. <laughs> don't ignore the comments, but also don't feed the trolls. If it's something where someone is deliberately trying to provoke you um, or uh, they've you know, put a stupid comment on one of your things, you don't have to comment on that. And you could, you know, most people are quite sensible in the way that, you know, we read reviews online and there's, I don't know, 90% of the reviews are amazing. And then there's a couple of people who say, oh, the place was dirty because there was a speck of dust on the mantelpiece. Someone sensible, rational would read that and say, actually, if there's a speck of dust on the mantelpiece, I don't really mind. Yeah. So, and, and seeing that the business has responded in a nice way, but we can see that sometimes there's the people who really you know, they just they just had a bad day or their expectations are way overblown for what they can expect for the price point, perhaps, or for what they what you deliver. So it's OK to not engage beyond a thank you for your feedback type of comment if someone is deliberately trying to wind you up. OK, so, for example, if you've got an online um, review or a comment on one of your social media platforms, that's negative, This you could say something like this. Thank you for taking the time to write your feedback. We're re we really appreciate customer comments and are always trying to improve our service offering. As a small business, every customer is value to, valuable to us and we want to make things right. Would it be okay for us to contact you privately to discuss a way to make reparations, if that's what you want to do, um, for your experience and ways we can improve in the future? We'd really value your input into improving our business. So rather than attacking, telling them they're wrong, they're lying, very polite, very measured, very collaborative response is more likely to get you a good outcome. Now you can say on there, if you don't wanna to have to deal with the follow-up, rather than would it be okay for us to contact you, you could, you could say, um, uh, please feel free to send us a message privately, um, but that puts something back on them. 
And I guess that then tells you how important it is to them to, to continue with the feedback. But you've given them an opportunity. The door is open for that kind of uh, conversation to start then. So something like that phrases it as a way to improve, a way to collaborate moving forward. Um, you might want to add, we're so sorry you did not enjoy your experience with us. Um, but when we apologize, we admit that we did something wrong almost. So saying it like that is very much framing it as like their experience. You can also say, we're so sorry that we didn't meet your expectations or we're sorry that um, we didn't deliver in this case, whatever the thing is that you're supposed to be delivering for them. So consider that whether you want to include the apology or not. But the first one is very kind of apologetic in its tone, very humble in its tone anyway. Um, the point on reparations, if they're going to expect uh, a refund or um, some money off or whatever, so they might even have said what they consider would fix the situation. Now, if customer service is really, really important to you, you might want to go above and beyond, um, you know, go out of your way to fix the situation. But perhaps that's not the case. It's really up to you what you're willing to, what lengths you're willing to go through, go to, to improve things for them. Um, okay, just a quick one from uh, Besk Bar in West Leaderville here in Perth. Um, stay classy. It's good to consider how valuable is the customer. So this is something that was shared very widely on social media. So this was a uh, events page in Perth saying, um, our page is focused on promoting everything that's worth doing in Perth. We've mentioned to one of, as one of our followers' favorite takeaway restaurants, congratulations, yay. So they're being super positive. We know, uh, we would like to know if you would be interested in organizing a partnership for us to post a review of your meals in our page. Sounds nice. So whoever does the comms at Besk said, hey guys, thanks for feedback. What does the partnership entail? Hey, if you could give us some complimentary food for our page admins, we would try it, take some pictures and post a review in our page. How does that sound? So on the one hand, you go, ah, oh, well, mm, it's kind of reasonable, maybe, but also given the current situation, this is where context, that social context is really, really important. Um, and best, probably weren't having the best day, but it worked out very well in their favor. Uh, sorry if you have to move the box around from my face. <laughs> um, they said, unfortunately, we're going to have to decline that offer. Very nicely phrased. Um, before COVID, it was already disgraceful to be asking small businesses for freebies in exchange for exposure. Now it's unforgivable. The hospitality industry has been crippled by this and you're trying to get a free feed out of people desperate for business. Think about your actions and consider changing your model. Expo so they're giving very clear like, feedback on what they can do differently. Exposure does not pay rent or staff and real reviewers pay for their food. And if you really loved Perth and all our amazing hospitality businesses, then you would too. That was shared by uh, John Lethleen, a food reviewer on his Instagram, that's how I saw it, and also Best Bars account, which has 10,000 followers. Um, I'm not sure they shared it on their own account. I think it was sent to, somehow leaked to John Lethleen, maybe deliberately, but it puts them in a very strong position. And the initial page that does the events and that was asking for the freebie actually shut down because of this message. I don't know if they've restarted or if they changed their name, um, but they, they disappeared pretty quickly and changed their, their image because, you know, a lot of people, particularly in hospitality, were very angry to see that things were, like this were being asked of small businesses still. So it's a really interesting kind of case study in how to respond to uh, a, a conversation you know, that obviously weren't comfortable with the request to start with, um, but also giving them a, a bit of perspective from how it looks from their point of view. So I thought it was very brave of best to stand up for themselves. And this has been very evident the last few weeks. There's been a lot of uh, topics uh, related to Black Lives Matter going around or perhaps things around climate change, religion, political matters. And there's a lot of small businesses like, do I comment on this? Do I discuss these things? And that's where it very much comes down to your personal values as a business owner and also your business's values. Is it something that is so important to you that you do want to comment on this? would these matters be important to your customers is it something that um they will want to see you discussing it really depends on your business um and are you willing to lose customers over this but are you also willing to potentially gain customers over this so that's something to consider if you you know are seeing someone commenting saying 
you know, even myself doing an acknowledgement of country to me now, that seems a very um, important, normal thing to do. Um, but for some of you, you might say, oh, don't get it. It's not my bag. Um, and that's fine. You know, everybody's different um, and everyone will have different perspectives on it. But little things like that as controversial topics, if you do get involved in those situations, really consider, do you want to do it on a personal level or as a business owner? And particularly if you're by yourself as a business owner, you're on social media a lot, then those kind of topics. Um, think about how they sit with your values, if that makes sense. So um, just to finish up, so that's me, Beth Ann Wynn. Um, my main bag is critical thinking, but I also do the communication stuff, can help with that, help with phrasing things if you struggle with that. I work with businesses of all sizes, schools, universities, not-for-profits, government agencies. Uh, my personal and business values are learning, fun, sustainability, community and equality. Um, so if those tick your boxes, then I'd love to hear from you and work with you. Um, and you can follow me, contact me in any of those ways. And please do feel free to um, you know, drop me a message on LinkedIn or something. Um, I'm the only Beth Ann Wynn in Australia, <laughs> so easy to find. Um, and I'd love to hear from you and try and help you beyond today if that's possible um, and questions so i'm going to go back to stop screen share and see where we're at hello all attendees there's a couple more since i last checked that one um, okay so now if you're still with me and you want to ask a specific question let me know about that there was one about um appointments sorry i forget who added that one in um let me see if i can scroll okay so customers who don't pay invoices ah nice yes um customers who don't who are dealing with customers don't pay invoices right i guess this is about um again the empathy piece is going to be very important they you want them to understand obviously that you know you've done the work and you need paying for it perhaps from their point of view, depending on what's going on with them, they, they might be having problems paying for it. So um, a phrasing similar to the late situation, the, the leaving early situation, you could say something like, um, and I would probably try and do this over the phone so they can't get away from the conversation. Because if you send an email or a message, then you don't know if they've seen it and there's all those kind of problems you know the the, the message has been sent but you don't know if, if they've actually got it so if possible i would call them um or if it's someone you know you want to call around you could just try and do it face to face um then they know you mean business um but if you could get them on the phone and say um assuming that you want to work with them again you want to keep relationships good but um could you say something like you know i've noticed that we've got uh, an invoice outstanding from uh three months ago um i really am in a situation where i, I need that to be paid um within a week is that going to be a problem for you or is there something that we need to work out together to help you get that paid off um had a customer come get a service that paid and then came back for a refund and she was not happy with the results. We refunded and she went on our social and put bad reviews. Hmm, that's a difficult one, Nirmal. Um, the fact that you already refunded, you've done the best that you can and that's a, that's not very, this is where the, the DICK factor comes in. You go, right, well, we've fixed it. We, you know, um, depending on where the socials are perhaps i mean i would not just leave it hanging um and and you could put in there actually because you know not knowing the situation apart from what you've put there you can say um in response thank you for your comments we appreciate uh we appreciated your feedback um and we appreciated your feedback on this and we gave you a full refund um, so, you know, feel free to say that publicly and then people can see that, you know, you've done your best to try and fix the situation. You say you received a full refund and we are working to improve this in the future because whoever's going to read that negative review, if they can see your response to it, then they can see that, you know, you've done the right thing. You've done your best to try and fix the situation. So I hope that helps. Um, help out with non okay carol's suggesting uh, an app which can pay with the help with the non-payment of invoices um learned about it a couple of years ago it could assist carol do you know the name of the app that would be helpful 
Um, how would you go about conflict resolution between two store owners arguing over allotted space? Catherine, is this in um, like a, a markets uh, situation? If you're face to face with the person, that's where the rapport is really important. Um, so trying to be nice about it to the best of your ability. In that situation, if you were discussing the space that you have, I would maybe rather than, you know, potentially argue because you don't necessarily know, perhaps your expectation of what you're supposed to have is different from their expectation. I would get in, uh, the organizers involved um, and try and get whoever's in a position of authority over the space to come over and try and mediate that. Um, because otherwise it might just become an argument between the two of you, but you just have different expectations of what you were supposed to have. So, um, I would I would get someone else in to clarify and you say, oh, hang on a minute. It looks like perhaps you or I have misunderstood which is our space. I think we can we have a conversation with the manager or with the the organizer to make sure that we're clear on who should be in which which area. That's how I personally would deal with that. And the way that, you know, on an on an airplane, they say never tell the person in front of you to lift their chair, try and get the hostess to come over and do it for you because you don't want them to then be annoyed for the rest of the flight and sitting in your face for the next five six hours um okay so someone's added in here i hope you can all see these comments there's an app created by collect more debt services the templates are very helpful however you do get those customers that it doesn't matter regardless of what you try um yeah that's something i think we could discuss further if you do want to drop me a message but um the you yeah it's going to be tricky with some and this is where the effort versus reward you know you can um threaten legal services or even get legal services involved depending on the size of the the invoice that's not paid uh, for some people the threat of legal action is enough if it's got to that point where you have and you know, check this. Have you definitely done everything you can within your power, within reason, to let them know that they needed to pay it? Because sometimes they're like, oh, they should have paid. And then you go, oh, actually, I only asked a couple of times and it may have gotten buried or lost in their list. So that's where the phone call means you know you've done everything. And also, if that phone call doesn't work, having evidence of um you know other methods that you've tried where it's written down and date stamped. So um probably emails the, the easiest to track with that. So you've got evidence that you have tried to communicate with them to get things paid off. Um, what are your recommendations to talking to staff who are also a friend or relationships, especially on the topics of larger business strategy, um, finance, marketing? Um, no, Mel, that one, talking to staff who are also friends, that is obviously, you know, very tricky. This is where being especially um, gentle and empathetic is important. Um, uh, so this one, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but if it's that you want them to, so you've got, you're very friendly with the staff or, or they're part of the family, um, and you want to talk about larger business strategy, finance, marketing stuff, rather than just their staff role, is it that you want to bring them along? to give them some of those responsibilities or is their current behavior not fitting with their action with is their current actions not fitting with the strategy um, it might be useful if you could pop a bit more information in the chat box for that one um, uh, just had a google looks like this could be a few thank you i think that's carol saying that collect more online influencer criticizing for not commenting thought that was really tough considering she had other things going on absolutely um and and that's um particularly if you're a business that's on um instagram i think but also you know facebook and other areas but i know myself on instagram um seeing people getting criticized for not supporting black lives matter for not saying anything on black lives matter um i mean it's useful then to um post there was a really good one going around saying just because somebody is not talking about it it doesn't mean they're not doing something um you know you might be 
because you get criticized for, oh, look, I donated this much money. But then if you're not doing anything, then you get criticized or you're not seen to be doing anything. You get criticized because people, you know, that kind of um, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, just paying lip service to the situation rather than actually doing something about the situation. It's, it's quite the minefield. And because some people are on Instagram as themselves, as a, as an individual posting and some people are on there as business entities, the, the lines get very blurred. So it's a very tricky situation. And that's where, you know, it really comes down to your values. I found for myself, you know, I put on there my, about one of my very core values is about equality. Um, in all different aspects. So I did comment on black lives matter movement because it's something that's important to me. And I thought, well, I don't particularly want to work with someone who doesn't support, you know, the fact that we are all equal and human. <laughs> um, so I, I felt comfortable, but I don't have staff members and other people to, um, uh, yeah, it's more about, you know, whether it might impact on future business for me. Um, but I was happy to, to do that because, you know, I would say that to someone in person. So I'm happy to put it on my person. You know, it's my solopreneur business page, but it's up to you. You know, if you're, um, I don't know, a plumber, then you don't need to comment about it, <laughs> you know, but you maybe don't have a huge Instagram following. So it's a bit of a, bit of a tricky one. Um, uh, yeah, Carol, all lives matter. There's the absolutely all lives matter but there are that phrase is problematic as you may have seen um the way that it's been used by um particularly in america by some people as a kind of a way to dismiss the black lives matter movement so and that's why uh you know for a lot of people it's like well if you're if you're not sure or you you know you're worried you're going to say the wrong thing then sometimes you might feel better not to say anything um Whereas others were encouraging and saying, you know, well, at least you're, you're trying to say something. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite the minefield and very much up to you and your personal values and the business values, whether you want to comment on those things or not. Um, uh, okay, Vanessa's asking, you mentioned before about best to talk over the phone to people who are non-payers and having that conversation over phones so is hard to not discuss it. Is it good to follow up with an email about the conversation? Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, or does that come across as too forward? I think um, if they're not paying invoices, then you do need to be assertive um, and it's okay to be assertive, um, particularly if it's gone on for a while. So I think that's a very good idea because then you've got evidence of um depends how it's written of course <laughs> um yeah but but if and this is where you have to decide the effort versus reward if it was a situation where you know they've not paid and you think actually this is not someone i want to work with again in the future then sending them that email afterwards just something short saying you know thank you for your time today i'm really glad we had that conversation I just wanted to clarify, this is my understanding of what's going to happen. So maybe, I don't know, you set up a payment plan with them and you say, you know, I understand that you're going to pay um, $100 today and then the next $100 next week or, or, or next month or something when you get paid for your work. You can show that, you know, that you care, that empathy, um, whatever you've figured out. It's useful to have it written down with a date stamp. So then when you follow it up, you've both got clear expectations of what should have happened um you know the same reason that we write down an agenda from a for, uh, sorry a uh, minutes from a meeting so then you can go oh, actually you said you're going to do this so uh you know that's written down in black and white this was the date following it up makes it a lot easier if there's that written evidence with a timestamp of when that thing happened and so if it does get to the point where you need to go to like legal proceedings and you've got the evidence to refer back to um Thank you, Carol. That's very kind of you. Um, it says any other. Um, there was one question near the beginning about um, appointments. Um, hopefully, there's been some stuff that you can take away from today. But if it's about people not keeping their appointments, this is where um, having those reminders in place and having those clear expectations of please arrive five minutes in advance. Please let us know if you can't make it for any reason, um, because, you know, I've had appointments that I can't get to um, because, you know, one of the kids has been taken to hospital and you go, 
oh my gosh and I would definitely try and let someone know but in those moments you know again it's you don't quite know what's going on from the other person's perspective but if they've had the confirmation and they've had a reminder um, in advance and I know a lot of small businesses hairdressers beauty things things like that struggle with people not showing up for appointments so you know you can have in place those policies where you say if you cancel within 24 hours um, you might forfeit the fee some places collect 50% of the fee in advance. I've seen that happen as well um, to secure the appointment, particularly if they're somewhere very busy, but you say, well, surely anyone has the right to do that. Um, if the customer is happy, it might put some people off. Um, so it's something you could consider. Um, but those reminders are very, very useful. Um, I'm just scrolling down. There's a couple of new messages. Really good. Oh, thank you. Um, some apps or adding something to your website where they get auto reminders. Yeah. And I know there might be some barriers, you know, in terms of you feel like your technical confidence isn't up to that, but I'm sure there's some advisors in business station that might be able to help you with that um, in terms of getting those set up and they're available at kind of a reasonable price if you're really struggling, but also Google, YouTube, I know sometimes myself, I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn a new thing, but but those text reminders are really, really useful. And I think text messages do tend to cut through the noise, whereas if it's a message on Messenger or email or other places, sometimes they get lost. 100% um, of the fee up front, uh, which, yes, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Carol saying here, uh, naturopath collects 100% of fees up front, which was off-putting. Yeah. Um, I've seen that happen and, and particularly for the first appointment, but if that, if that person is still managing to do business fine with that situation, then that's really up to them. But like I say, it can put some customers off for sure. Um, Tina, thank you. Great. I'm really glad you got some value from it. Um, any idea how people think of paying for appointments while booking? Uh, no, Mel, this is very dependent on the business. Um, you might want to go and have a look, uh, see if what other businesses similar to your, your own are doing. So this is where a bit of research is useful. Um, I think people are coming around to that idea. And if you explain it's because you're busy and perhaps they can transfer it to um, another appointment, if they have to change the appointment, then that's fine. So you would need to be very clear on what happens with that money. Um, if they need to cancel, um, is it still available to them? But the fact that they've put some money down to start with, hopefully will, um, you'd have to do a bit of playing, experimenting with this, but would it slow down the rate of no shows if that's the main problem? Yeah, so Vanessa said, I agree. If I'm not told up front, I'm hesitant to pay in advance. You really want to know very clearly what, what that, you know what's the the what do you want them to what do you want to, to happen as a result of that less no shows or um what have we got hairdressers surprisingly increased pro oh, i had that carol i'm so annoyed <laughs> but then introduced a lo loyalty program with 10 percent discount for loyalty yeah i mean hairdressers if they're busy they've been really busy the last few weeks and prices do seem to have gone up for some of those services um so yeah the it's it's going to put some people off and some people will continue their services it's but it's whether you think it's worthwhile because you know if you've got fewer customers but they're paying more money then perhaps it's it's worth your while to do that but um it depends where your value sits and and uh, you know this whole covid lockdown has given a lot of small businesses a chance to reflect on that and say right well moving forward what do we want do we want quantity of customers and we want to take on more staff do we want quality of customers do we want to change what we offer lots of questions to be asked there many trades have changed terms to paying more upfront to avoid non-payment needing cash flow during covid yeah absolutely vanessa and i think because those things are happening it becomes more normal and more acceptable um and i guess again you you just want to make sure that it's in writing somewhere you know things paid up front um we make sure that everybody's happy and agreeing on the services um and you know for some people it might put them off they might go elsewhere but if it means your business is more secure and it saves you that stress of having to follow up with things perhaps that's worth it um i had a, a tattoo my first tattoo last year and uh i was asked to 
pay up front for an unseen design. Um, and I was <laughs> very much like, oh, as much as I liked the tattoo artist, I said, actually, I'm going to go somewhere else because I need to at least see the design and know what I'm getting for something permanent like that before I pay for it. And, it, you know, this form was particularly expensive. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's going to put some people off. But as it becomes more normal, and I think, again, that paying 50% of the fee up front is going to become more normal as well. Um, then that will help. It, it, it totally depends on your business. So again, if you do want to like send me a message, um, so it's Beth Ann Wynn, W I W N, um, and perhaps I can give you some extra support on that. Um, to think because you know it, it's so dependent on your business and what you currently do, what your clients currently expect, and what you're gonna, what you want to do moving forward. Um, now I don't <laughs> normally one of the staff members from business station hop on here and let me know, you know, if I need to finish and what's going on, but where are we up to? Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, thanks Sarah. Yeah. Feel free to drop me a follow, drop me a message. It'd be lovely to hear from you. You're all just sort of names on a screen and I'm staring at myself. So it's really lovely to connect with people after a session like this and, and know, you know, what you found useful. And I'd love to hear if you have any success using any of these tips or the, the kind of scripts that I've given, uh, feel free to, hop on hop off and carry on with your day um and uh i hope to see you again either at business station or elsewhere um but yeah thank you very much for joining me i'm going to wrap things up there i hope i got to your question if i didn't drop me a message and um yeah good luck with the, your difficult conversations be brave 20 seconds of in insane courage gets you very very far thanks carol thanks joe thanks vanessa <laughs> see you guys bye